Hi, my name is Manish Bhapat. I look after product marketing for EMC South Asia. What we'll talk about today is the benefits of optimizing your infrastructure using technologies like virtual provisioning. So what does virtual provisioning mean? Virtual provisioning has many names. So some people call it thin provisioning. We call it virtual provisioning. But let's look at fundamentally what this technology is all about and how it can benefit customers in their infrastructure. So let's look at a typical infrastructure. Let's say these are users or you can call it applications or you can call it servers, whichever way you would call it. But fundamentally the issue right now here as a hypothetical example is that all of them need 10 terabytes uh, of capacity. You need 10 terabytes of capacity but the problem is how can we provide it? The problem is that there are budget constraints or possibly there's no capacity right now left in the storage. How do we provision for 30 terabytes to these three users or these three servers? More importantly are they going to use all the 30 terabytes right now at this moment? So the first step starts again with classification and understanding your information. How much capacity actually is used by each of these servers or users? Let's look at a situation where hypothetically it's a couple of terabytes that is used right now but 10 terabytes is being asked because the users anticipate that by the end of the year they'll be using up 10 terabytes of cap capacity. Now there are multiple challenges here. One challenge is that why do I provision 10 terabytes to all of each of them when they are currently using only two terabytes for one simple reason. The simple reason is that no storage administrator wants to keep reconfiguring a system every couple of months and giving them more capacity. So the only option is give them 10 terabytes. But when you give them 10 terabytes, what happens? There's a lot of wasted capacity in the storage. Point number one. Point number two, when you talk of power consumption, all these are spinning drives which are going to consume more power in your infrastructure. Point number three, 10 terabytes of growth which is anticipated at the end of the year is purely based on calculations. What if the calculations go wrong and he ends up using only five terabytes? So you still have a situation where after provisioning for all of it, you still have wasted capacity. How can we overcome that particular problem? Let's look at this situation where logically it is being presented to all the three of them as a 10 terabyte capacity, which we call as virtual allocation. Now this is a virtual allocation. All the users feel that they've got 10 terabytes. At the back end, the physical allocation is different. What the administrator has done is taken a total of 10 terabytes, knowing that each of them is using only a couple of terabytes at the moment and given them some capacity. So example, three, three and four, making up a total of 10 terabytes for the physical allocation. Now what happens is that you can set thresholds here saying, okay, Mr. Server A or Mr. User A, your physical capacity is three terabytes, your virtual capacity is 10 terabytes. Every time you reach a particular threshold, could be 75%, could be 80%, could be 50%, you keep drawing capacity up from the pool till you reach the maximum of 10 terabytes. Now what happens here is that not only you don't have to reconfigure just because the capacity keeps increasing, he can keep going till he reaches 10 terabytes. Secondly, at the end of the year, if he has not used up the full 10 terabytes, it has not been borrowed from the storage pool right here and it can be allocated to someone else who needs it much more than probably the user A needs. Point number three, you don't have to do any management. It's all the capability of your storage to be able to do this virtual provisioning on the fly. It's all about getting the configuration right and there will be certain considerations that you must have in mind when you look at virtual provisioning. What are the considerations? for implementing virtual provisioning. The most important one is the way it integrates with the application. Application integration is the key because what happens is if the application is not aware of the concepts of virtual provisioning, the application will end up using all the capacity. For example, in the earlier versions of databases, would you be able to provision virtually a 10 terabyte and still give physically three terabytes? Probably not because the database would take up all the capacity which was allocated and just start writing its own table space on that. With the new versions of databases that are coming out, they are aware of virtual provisioning. So they are able to auto extend or automatically understand that what is the physical allocation, what is the virtual allocation and keep borrowing capacity as and when required. So application integration is the key. You don't want to end up in a situation where you virtually allocated something and the application doesn't know and it took away all your capacity. So that's the first part. Second is now the point number two and three are actually tied in. You are estimating the rate of growth. What if that estimate is lower than the actual growth. So make sure that you have some amount of physical capacity available in the pool so that if the 10 terabytes get used up much faster than 
the one year that was estimated, what you will end up not doing is falling short of capacity. So make sure that you still have the physical capacity at the back end, maybe not the full 30 terabytes in this example, but maybe an additional five or 10 terabytes so that as the users start using up more data or more space in your storage, you are able to allocate and you have sufficient time to add new capacity as and when required. And finally, we come down to the last point, which is how does it marry with replication? So on one side, it needs to tie in very well with the application. On the other side, it needs to tie in very well with the replication technologies. How can a thin provisioned volume or a virtual provisioned volume replicate to another side? Is it integrated with the replication technologies to ensure that a virtual provisioned or a thin provisioned volume can be replicated to another side? That's another key consideration that you need to make because it shouldn't happen that by implementing a virtual provisioning or a thin provisioning, you should not be forced to replicate to a full volume at the other side or not being able to replicate a virtually provisioned volume at all. So these are some of the considerations that you would want to make while evaluating virtual provisioning for your infrastructure. So in summary, what we talked of virtual provisioning is how to actually decouple the virtual allocation versus physical allocation. How can we save on the physical allocation while still uh, making the applications and the servers and the users feel that they have got the complete capacity? How can we save money? How can we avoid too many spinning drives that are doing nothing in your storage? How can we how can we actually save on the power consumption? The other part is how easy is it to provision? You know, it, it, it should not be a rocket science that you need to provision it again and again all the time. So how easy is it to just start and just go with it? Third part is how easy is it to replicate? How does it integrate well with your replication technologies? And how does it integrate well with the applications? And most importantly, again, how do you monitor it? Do you have a proper infrastructure from a management perspective to be able to manage the whole thing completely? No. My name is Manish Bapat. Look after product marketing for EMC South Asia. And what we talked about is virtual provisioning. Thank you for tuning in and we look to see you again.